Hello guys and welcome, this is Revolution. On today's video, we are going to go through a countdown of the top 10 most powerful competitors in the Tournament of Power. Now that we have seen Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku against a fully powered Jiren, we can evaluate where each competitor in the Tournament of Power lies amongst themselves. However, if you have not seen episode 130 of Dragon Ball Super, I suggest this video is not for you. This video will contain spoilers, you have been warned. For clarity, this is a countdown concerning raw power. Just because somebody ranks higher in this countdown doesn't necessarily mean that they will win in a verse battle against a lower ranked warrior as the higher power level doesn't always guarantee you victory. That is a black or white and a divisional fallacy. This video is solely about, well, power levels. Now, fusions are incorporated into this countdown, but there is only one iteration of each character. The most powerful version of themselves that they've shown in the Tournament of Power is the only version of themselves that are allowed in Countdown. For example, Super Saiyan Blue Kai Ken times 20 Goku, UI Omen Goku would all make it in this chart. However, Mastered Ultra Instinct is Goku's most powerful form to date. I have ranked all these competitors objectively and I do believe I've made a very, very controversial choice. But just before I start, what I would like you to do is keep in mind where you would put Super Saiyan Blue Vegito and Merge Zamasu from the Future Trunk Saga in these rankings. And make sure you let me know where you think they would be in the comment section. So the tournament itself has spanned 35 episodes consisting of 80 different warriors from 8 different universes. However, there have been many powered up variations of some of these warriors and here is the top 10. In 10th position, I have True Ultimate Gohan. Gohan for me just edges out the Universe 11 Speedstar, Dispo. This is based solely on his fight in a confined space with Dispo where Gohan was overpowering Dispo due to the fact that Dispo couldn't utilize his speed. What this tells us is, if you allow Dispo to traverse over a long distance at his fastest velocities, he packs an even bigger punch than someone like Gohan. However, in a confined space where he cannot reach those velocities, it's proven that Gohan has more raw power. Upon Freezer confining Dispo and Gohan in that space, Shin the Supreme Kai of Universe 7 stated that in a confined space, there's no way Gohan will lose to Dispo, which once again supports the fact that Gohan, in terms of raw power, is stronger. However, upon fighting Toppo in episode 123, it was quite clear that Gohan was completely outclassed against that caliber of character. It's hard to gauge where Ultimate Gohan is. We know that it's a lot stronger than the Ultimate Gohan iteration we saw in the Boo Saga. In episode 90, we surprisingly got to see him trade blows with a Super Saiyan Blue Goku. It is bewildering how Gohan managed to attain that power in such a short amount of time. My best explanation would be that this is the true version of his ultimate form. After all, he did go straight to battle in the Boo Saga after acquiring the form, very similar to how Frieza went straight to battle with his golden state in Resurrection of F. I personally have true ultimate Gohan from anywhere between Super Saiyan God Goku level to Super Saiyan Blue Goku level, but I think any more than that is a stretch. In ninth position, I have true Golden Frieza. Now, Frieza has lasted till the very end of the Tournament of Power, outlasting characters who are far stronger than him, but that doesn't suggest where his power level lies. In fact, Frieza hasn't done a great deal to suggest he's gotten any stronger since his punch off with Goku in episode 95. Freezer's tournament has mostly consisted of him torturing weaklings, however based on what he did in episode 95 he knocked Super Saiyan Blue Goku out in one punch and was declared by Whis and Beerus as an equal to Super Saiyan Blue Goku so that puts Freezer at high tier Super Saiyan Blue level. You could argue that whilst Frieza knocked Goku back into his base form, Frieza still remained in his golden state. So maybe he was a bit stronger, but ultimately in this tournament, apart from picking on weaklings, when it came to the big guns, Frieza has been outclassed by God of Destruction Toppo and swatted aside by Jiren. He has, however, smartly made an ally in some rubble, which he has been hiding under. Regardless, Frieza has made it to the end of the tournament despite not being one of the most powerful. In a place is Android 17, Android 17 took us all by surprise upon his return when he competed with Super Saiyan Blue Goku in episode 86 and Goku even went as far to say he didn't expect to have to use Super Saiyan Blue and then also said that Android 17 was still holding back. Well we got to see Android 17 unleash his power in this tournament. He pushed the leader of the Pride Troopers Toppo to use his full power in his regular state which if you go back to the Zen Exhibition match is the amount of power that 
Topo believed could compete with a Goku who would break his limits. Of course, when he did so against Android 17, Android 17 started to lose the fight until Frieza intervened, but Android 17 managed to hang in there. Of course, he then managed to hang in there with God of Destruction Topo. Of course, that wasn't to do with power, but more strategic dominance. And then a few episodes later, in episode 127, he actually managed to hurt Jiren, or at least hurt Jiren's outfit. Of course, the two major standout moments for Android 17 in this tournament was against Ana Raza, where he burrowed through an attack that was holding off Goku Blue, Vegeta Blue, Ultimate Gohan and Golden Freezer, who shatter Anarasa's sensor, and of course when he self-imploded to protect Goku and Vegeta against the power of Jiren. I personally believe Android 17 showed he was stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Goku, not by much, maybe to a degree of two times Super Saiyan Blue Goku, but he definitely proved his worth in this tournament. Add to that inexhaustible energy and a strategic genius, Android 17 has proved to be a formidable ally. In 7th place we have the legendary assassin Hit. Hit exited this tournament a lot earlier than a lot of us expected, but he did so at the hands of a behemoth. The legendary assassin Hit took on Jiren the Grave Universe 11 straight after Jiren's fight with Ultra Instinct Omen Phase 1 Goku, and in my humble opinion did better than Goku did in the specials, far better than Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken x 20 Goku. However, it could be argued this wasn't necessarily down to just power alone, its time manipulating abilities, whilst not enough to defeat Jiren were at least causing a suppressed Jiren problems. Even Topo commented that the assassin was causing Jiren more problems than they thought he originally would. But even taking away Hit's time manipulating abilities, Hit is no joke. And whilst he did better than Blue Kaioken times 20 Goku in the specials, I think it would be a stretch to say that Hit is as powerful as that iteration of Goku. However, it is clear that this is the most powerful version of Hit we have seen so far. Even after eliminating Hit, Jiren comments that he has defeated both of the most prominent threats to Universe 11. Obviously, as the tournament continued, that changed. But given how well he did against Jiren in a one-on-one, -on -one, you have to say he is stronger than Android 17. In sixth place, we have the merged warrior Analaza. Now, Analaza was able to push back Five members of Universe 17, including Golden Frieza, Android 17, Ultimate Gohan, Super Saiyan Blue Goku, and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. It wasn't until Android 17's quick thinking to destroy his energy reactor and literally damage the source of his power. Analaza was so strong that, despite everything God of Destruction Moscow had seen, he believed that Analaza was the key to their success of winning this tournament. He generally believed that they would win the tournament after Analaza demonstrated his amazing power. Sure, Analaza was strong, but I think Moscow was just getting desperate. But without a shadow of doubt, he was pushing Android 17 off the stage pretty easily, and Android 17 had to be saved by Android 18. It was able to bend space through sheer power alone. Upon seeing Analaza's attack, Vegeta feared that he was taking out the whole arena, which forced Universe 7 members to react but this is a testament to how powerful Analaza is. Whilst you feel if Goku could have mustered Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken x 20 at that time, he would have won, Analaza is still a force to be reckoned with, and he's sixth on this list. In fifth position, and this is where it starts getting controversial, guys, is God of Destruction Topo. Now, the truth is, even Topo at full power in his regular state may have still been fifth in this list. Now, these next three positions on this list I found really difficult to scale, and Basically, the results of what I put in this list now are based off the information we have, and we have a complete lack of information of how powerful exactly God of Destruction Topo is. We know he is more powerful than Frieza, but there's an argument that his regular state at full power would be more powerful than Golden Frieza. In his original state at full power, you could say he is equivalent to Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken x 10, anywhere up to Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken x 20, as he believed in the Zen Exhibition match that he could compete with that version of Goku. Obviously, God of Destruction Topo is stronger than that, but how many times? We just don't get any indication of how much stronger he is. We just know he has Hakai energy, and upon gaining Hakai energy, he can easily dominate Golden Freezer and Android 17, and even gets the upper hand on Blue Evolution 
Phase 1 Vegeta. But despite seeming impressive at first, God of Destruction Toppo doesn't really do that much, and that's why he's hard to gauge. Like I said, even in his original state at full power, he should have still been able to beat Golden Frieza and Android 17 in one-on-one -on -one battles, so it really is hard to tell whether in God of Destruction mode he is 2 times stronger or 100 times stronger, but without the information, it would be an appeal to ambiguity to say he's more than two times stronger than what he was in his original full powered state. But I can understand if you make that argument. But at the start of this video, I promise to be objective and I have done. The fourth most powerful character in this tournament for me, once again, another controversial decision, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. Now it pains me to put Vegeta here because over the course of the whole Dragon Ball franchise, Vegeta is my favourite character. And I was one of the many Vegeta fans hoping that Vegeta would be the most powerful character come the end of this tournament, obviously that is definitely not the case. But, once again, with Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, just like God of Destruction Toppo, there is not a lot of information to go on. We just know that Vegeta, using pretty much all his power in this transformation, is a little bit stronger than Toppo. Upon gaining what you could call a pride boost with this new transformation, Phase 2 Super Saiyan Blue Evolution overpowered God of Destruction Toppo at full power with a final explosion, but it left Vegeta pretty drained afterwards. A lot of people consider Blue Evolution to be relative to Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 or a little bit stronger. And obviously as he grew the power within this transformation against Toppo, he ascended even further, but how much further did he ascend? We simply don't have that information. And once again, for me to scale him any higher will be an appeal to ambiguity. There is one statement claiming Vegeta has boundless energy in this transformation, but once again, that is ambiguous, because if he truly had boundless energy, he would have been able to compete with Jiren. So in third place, and this is going to make a lot of people mad, but I've done this objectively, guys, and basing it off the person she fights with, as well as the statements in this episode, Kefla in Super Saiyan 2 is third. This isn't about whether you like her character, it isn't about whether you think she has good writing behind her, the fact is, what she demonstrates is incredible. We already know that the universe six Saiyans are incredibly powerful as it is, but amongst them, Kale is a freak of nature and Kalevla is a prodigy. They have used Patara fusion. That in itself is quite a powerful fusion. As we saw, she completely bewildered a Super Saiyan god Goku. Goku goes to Super Saiyan Blue and she goes Super Saiyan. Even though it appears Super Saiyan Blue Goku is doing better than what he did previously, it was clear Kefla was holding back power as when Goku used Kaioken, Kefla literally knocked him out in one blow. And this forced Goku to once again trigger Ultra Instinct. Now Whis commented that Kefla rivaled the power of the Spirit Bomb, but as we learn later on in the tournament, each time Goku reaches Ultra Instinct, it takes a bigger trigger than before. So Super Saiyan Kefla was even stronger than the Spirit Bomb. When you consider that Spirit Bomb was probably twice as strong as Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 Goku, that is mammoth. Then Kefla turns Super Saiyan 2, which is at least two times stronger than that Spirit Bomb, which if we keep it simple would put her at at least 80 times Super Saiyan Blue. She then on her final attack continues to swell her power even further so she gets even stronger than that. It's implied that Super Saiyan 2 Kefla is stronger than Ultra Instinct Omen Phase 2 Goku as Bados states that Kefla's power and speed are impressive but Goku's reaction speed is better and as we witness in the fight Kefla is literally laughing at Goku's attacks but she cannot hit him and you cannot beat what you cannot hit. And then upon her fight or flight response where she sends lasers in every direction. Roshi comments that if one of those hits Goku, it will kill him, even in Ultra Instinct. But the reality is, she sent out hundreds of those things. Of course, Ultra Instinct Goku eliminated her, but he literally hit her with a Kamehameha from point blank range, pushing her off the stage. I definitely understand if you wanted to put Kefla 5th and have God of Destruction Toppo and Blue Evolution Vegeta in 4th and 3rd respectively, but due to a lack of information, I'm being objective here, and this is what I've decided. It was a tough decision. The second strongest warrior in the tournament is a fully powered, triggered Jiren the Grey. The truth is, even a suppressed Jiren would be second in this list, because the gap between second and third is enormous. Now that the fight between a mastered Ultra Instinct Goku and a full powered Jiren has concluded in episode 130, obviously the tournament didn't end there, but this was the end of that fully powered battle. 
it was clear to see that Jiren was losing. However, upon being cornered by Master Daughter Instinct Goku, he managed to unleash his hidden power and reach a completely new level of power to the point where he was starting to overpower even Master Daughter Instinct Goku, landing multiple blows on a character with mastery of self-movement, which speaks volumes about how much Jiren powered up. I literally cannot put a number on it. He completely overpowered Ultra Instinct Goku's Kamehameha. However, Jiren lost his head and attacked Goku's friends, which gave Goku even more emphasis and handed him an even bigger boost in power. Jiren shook a fifth dimensional construct in the world of Void just by flexing his muscles in the specials, so who knows what he is truly capable of at full power. Of course, the number one spot could only go to one man. Of course, that is Goku, the main protagonist of the Dragon Ball franchise. He has enveloped a new transformation, Ultra Instinct, the state of the gods, which gives him mastery of self-movement. He has the defensive and attacking components down in the silver head iteration of Ultra Instinct. Upon Jiren trying to disregard and eliminate Goku's friends and the source of his power, Goku got a boost in power, which literally gave him the edge over a full power Jiren. It was noted upon this power up that Goku's speed had increased even further and Jiren literally couldn't keep up. Eventually Goku hit him with a big Kamehameha and Jiren was down for the count. By this point Jiren had accepted defeat and begrudgingly had to admit that Goku's source of power, Goku's friends and the trust they put in him surpassed even his ideal of absolute strength. So guys, that's my top 10. Some decisions are controversial, I know, but I've been as objective as possible. Whether you agree or disagree or not, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. By all means, give me your top 10. If you don't agree with my positioning of Kevlar and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, let me know in the comment section, but keep it civil. Also, don't forget about the question I asked you earlier about Super Saiyan Blue Vegito and Merged Zamasu. If you enjoyed this video, whether you agree with my rankings or not, please do smash that like button, lend me your energy. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Come follow me on Instagram and Twitter where we can talk about Dragon Ball further. Until next time, Ad Astra.